Okay, now that I have these two ordinal rasters, they're kind of suitability rasters that tell me how much I think I'm likely to find um, a yellow birch based on elevation, down here of course where 10 is most likely, 5 is okay, and 0 is bad. And aspect where northeast is good, right, northeast is good, that's 10, Everywhere else, every other direction is 5, which is okay. And then southwest, which is 0, is bad. Um, I want to bring in land cover because I know that probably that's going to help me with my analysis as well. And so I'm going to drag in my nlcd2001.img. It came in with some other files, but they won't, you can't load them at all. It's just the simplest one, the .img. And of course, this is just another suffix that's another format of the raster data model. Nothing we need to be too worried about or anything. It'll QGIS is smart. It can read it. We bring it in and this is a nice kind of looking color scheme here. A little different than the main land cover data set. The values of course if we click on them I'm hoping you can tell me now that these are integer values and that they are nominal. They record a name where it looks like the 40s probably represent forest and 80s and 90s are some kind of agricultural land cover, and 11 is water. So I'd like to recategorize this to, um, or even reclassify is probably what I should say. We're going to reclassify this raster so that um, it's less likely, probably pretty bad, zero. We're not likely to find a yellow birch in the middle of a field. Um, maybe five, we're pretty likely to find one. Um, in a conifer forest, uh, eight, we're very likely to find one in a deciduous forest, and then 10, we're most likely to find one in a mixed forest because of what we'd read about um, how much yellow birch is a, is a transitional species. But before we use the raster calculator um, to reclassify this raster, uh, we need to look at the metadata so we know what values we're f uh, kind of fishing for. So go into a tutorial to folder into the source data and the metadata for these types of data sets that you download tend to either be kind of text documents or HTML documents. This one has both. I'm going to open up the text document. Ooh, this does not look as nice as the last metadata document we had. There's no nice, simple little table. It's all very highly formatted. So um, I'm just going to show you. You go down a ways, and there are all these tables and things. Enumerated value, that's what we're looking for. So when it gets into the attributes, and it tells us all about the attributes, I go to enumerated value, 1, no data. 11 is open water, just like we thought, right? Um, 12 is parental ice and snow, um, 21 is developed open space, and it goes on and on, and here we go, 41, deciduous forest, 42, evergreen forest, 43, mixed forest. So let's make 43, 10, 42, 5, right, the evergreen was fairly likely, but not as likely as the other two, and deciduous forest will be 8. And then let's just leave all the rest as zero because it's possible but very unlikely that we'll find what we're looking for outside of a forest. So I'm going to close that, go back into my QGIS, go to my raster calculator, and I'm going to say everywhere where the NLCD equals 41 this was the deciduous forest. So that's going to return a true value of 1 for deciduous. I'm going to multiply that by 8, always using my parentheses. And I'm going to add that to where the NLCD equals 42. And that would be the evergreen forest. And I'm going to call that 5. And we'll add that one to where the NLCD equals 43. And this is the mixed forest, which we really like. 
And so this mixed forest that we get the true value for that is 1. Let's call this 10. That's the best. And then everything else will be false for our statement, which makes it 0. And I'll go up here and name this in the scratch folder. I'm going to call this uh, Woods Good. Save. And let's run that and see if that works. OK. You might have something that looks different, but I've just changed the symbology um, so that my woods good matches my aspect good and my elevation good. So I want to combine all these to make one raster, one overall suitability raster. And I think the thing that you're going to notice is that right now, um, if I use my identity tool and click around, I've got integer values for everything, right? And these integer values represent my score. But when we take the average of all three of these to see, oh, does it get a score of 10 everywhere? Or does it get a score of 10 somewhere, but 8 somewhere else, and 0 somewhere else? We're going to end up with a kind of a floating point, or what we'd say is a real number continuous raster, where the overall suitability of the habitat is hopefully represented in kind of a um, a heat map, you might say. That's kind of a generic word that I don't like very much, but it rings true with people these days. So all I'm going to do is go to my raster calculator, and hopefully you can remember how to calculate an average. You open the parentheses and say, I want to do aspect good plus elevation good plus woods good, and all of that is going to get divided by 3 because 3 is the number, the total number of inputs we have. So if something gets a score of 10 in each one, then it's divided by 3 and it remains a 10. If something gets a 10 and a 5 and a 0, it would be, oh, 15 divided by 3. The average of 0, 5, and 10 is 5, right? So 15 divided by 3 is 5, and so on. And we'll end up with some that are decimals and that kind of thing. So, that looks pretty good to me. I'm going to go up here to my scratch space again and call this suitability. I'm going to call it suitability 1 because I'm not sure. I may have to run this again, but I just want to make sure I have um, kind of my enumeration here. All right, let's run it and see what happens. Okay. So you should have something that looks like this. Uh, it doesn't really make a ton of sense because it's going from black to white through gray. And no data and 10 both are being symbolized with the color white. So it, it looks a little funky. Um, and if you zoom in, you might see, um, oh, interesting. You know, It looks like there are very likely places on some of these slopes that are probably mixed woods and northeast facing and that kind of thing. But it also has a white, this is a lake, I know that to be a fact. So that's a lake, Lake Champlain's over here. But this, these are no data spots, right? So I think what I'd like to do is change the color scheme so that it makes more sense in my brain uh, what we're actually looking at. And I want to make it look kind of like a heat map. Um, I'm going to go up to properties here. Uh, I don't really like the word heat map because it's it's kind of vague. Um, it, it's how people feel when they see a map, but a lot of times they don't know what the colors mean. But it's a useful term. Uh, we're making a heat map just to show higher probability to lower probability. But um, you know, we'll talk more about what that means at a later date. So single band pseudo color, and I want to make a new color ramp. And if I just go straight to new color ramp here, I'm going to make a gradient. So everything that's, let's say, under 5, I want to be really dull looking, because I, I don't think it really matters. But on the spectrum between 5 and 10, I want it to ramp up so that 8 looks bright and then 10 looks super bright. So let's go start with a completely transparent color. And let's add some stops in there so that we can change hue and that kind of thing. How about at 50%, we start with this kind of yellow scheme here. 
and let's have it be completely opaque and at 50 percent yep it gets it starts getting yellow but then let's add another stop and let's say it's going to be completely red at 75 okay and then for super super um, likely places I'm gonna go from red to something gross looking let's go to purple or pink or something like that so I'm gonna make the last color uh, let's just go straight for the gold see what that looks like that looks interesting I think it's gonna help us see the extremes of the data set right we're gonna see we're not gonna see anything from kind of zero to five probably and then right at five we start seeing color and then as it gets up closer to seven and eight and nine we're gonna start to see these brighter colors so I'm just gonna go with that and call this um, suitable habitat we have to remember this is a very subjective thing we're doing but I think it's probably okay and I'm gonna go min max and say uh, load the minimum and maximum we're gonna classify and let's just apply and see what happens interesting so check that out hopefully you can kind of see how you know there are certain places that look like they have kind of a bunch of different criteria that are being met on different aspects right like these are probably good elevation are good forest type of cover but there are these kind of it looks like veins running up and down the state where it's maybe more likely that we're going to see um, the kind of tree that we want to see the yellow birch so this is still not a very good map to hand to someone so I think what we'll do in the next video is I'd like to make a, a kind of pretty topographic map um, you know we'll add some roads and borders and, uh, and counties and things like that and then we'll have just the extremes of the data set showing so that we can show where we think it's likely that we'll see yellow birch in Vermont and we can plan our trip there um, you know more intelligently so thanks for making it through the video I hope this means something to you <laughs> uh, I know that it was probably kind of confusing to go from booleans straight to um, to kind of classifying rasters but I think the more you learn now the easier it's going to be later so I hope you enjoyed it